Hello class, this is uh, Rod. I want to talk about ANSI 446 for a couple reasons. I'll circle that and I'm, you might say you don't have to circle that, but I'm playing around with a program I don't use much. It's called Explain Everything. It's got a lot of abilities and I need to refresh my memory of how things work. Like if you don't use something for half a year, you know how that works. Some of you are in the on-campus class, and some of you listening to this, because I'm going to send it to both groups, some of you are pure online people. Wonderful. It ends up being either way, the projects are the same, although if you're on campus, we meet twice a week uh, in a regular week. That's another reason I'm making this video, because today it looked like showers. Today's Thursday. What is it? The 27th of August. And I didn't want us to get rained on, although the grass spot has worked well. So this is really for the Lab 2 people, especially. They haven't heard any of this. If you came Tuesday, you heard this, but you might want to review something. Uh, this stuff, listen to it again, and you might pick up some new things, maybe... Hopefully, yes. And um, so anyway, so there it is, my red pointer. At one time, and I, I won't belabor this, but uh, years, a couple years ago when I was using this program, it never recorded the red laser pointer on the first uh, slide I was using. It's You, you put slides together. It's kind of like PowerPoint, but it does a lot of things I like. And so anyway... We're going to have a talk about how to learn the most this semester, and you'll see where we get points. If you haven't come to class or are online, this is all new to you. I do want to um, enlarge this picture because I think it's so neat. I'm going to put it here, and another thing is I'm playing around with this. I want to see how this works once I make a movie. Uh, this isn't a movie yet, but there it is. He, this guy's my hero. Oh my gosh, I didn't see this other dog. Isn't that another dog? It looks like it. I never saw. Oh my God. He's got, okay, look at that beautiful pit bull. Oh my gosh. That looks lovable. Anyway, then I'm going to see if my laser pointer works on an enlarged picture. Yes. There's another dog. I didn't notice that. I know. I remember seeing this guy, but this is another dog. Yes, it is. So that is incredible. Yes, and it's very appropriate with the hurricane that just hit down in the Gulf states of Louisiana and so forth. Never, ever, ever leave your dogs behind. Yes, that is great. Okay, now I went on to my second slide. I'm not sure if my program is recording everything perfectly. The images didn't enlarge. I don't think like I have it on my own screen. But anyway, here's the syllabus. I'll tell you where the syllabus is at. You know, if you go to my website, rodalrich.com, click on courses, then click on the course name, then you get here. Okay. So I want to talk about three items in this slide. And this is going to take a little longer, but that's good because some of you haven't heard this before. There are three ways to gain points. Every way has 400 points associated with it. So there's equal weight of a business enterprise project. We'll come back to that. You make an educational video with some program and then turn it in. And this is where we need to be thinking a lot. And then um, many times for labs, we you will be assigned a documentary on something about companion animals, like pit bulls in California. Um, oh, they're, you know, how do uh, therapy dogs, how they raise therapy dogs. There's a bunch of them. I can't recall all of them right now, but you'll be assigned these almost weekly, but not maybe quite weekly. And they really kind of take the place of the labs because... Especially this semester, it's hard to bring in animals. In past semesters, I've brought in animals, but I've always always brought them in during like the lecture part. But because of social distancing, our even our lecture classroom couldn't hold all the students at one time that we have in the on-campus version. So we'd have to have two hold two meetings, 
duplicate. And then for the labs, oh my gosh, the room I have for the labs was assigned. I would probably have to have um, maybe three sections for Mon uh, Tuesday and then two, at least two or three sections for Thursday's lab. So I'd be teaching the same thing six times. Well, there's not enough hours in the day. Why? I have two other classes. So this is crazy. So a lot of this stuff will be online. You submit them and so forth. Let's go back to the top here. Business Enterprise Project. Each student required to write a 10-page business project. Like, I'll give you an example. Like, let's say you want to board horses and have, uh, make a business out of it. And you, you know, rent stalls and people bring their horses and they keep their horses and you want 20 stalls and how would you design that? How would you hire? And I'll be sending out some outlines like, okay, what employees would you have? And would you do a background check on those employees? Um, so forth and so on. Uh, what about safety disaster plans? That's always good. Uh, for example, if you had horses and you were boarding them now over in California where all the fires are, what would you do if a fire was heading towards you? Most places don't have enough horse trailers to hold all the horses they have at their site. So that's scary. I know in real life out in California, they sometimes let the horses run when there's a fire coming and they'll gather them up later because the horse can run around the fires probably better than people can. But anyway... So this project is something you think about. Start thinking about it as soon as this video is over. And 10 pages typed. And then if you have anything like a picture or an outline of a building or prices for certain services, then that should be in an appendix. Okay, so there'll be an appendix in most cases. And I will give you some handouts with um, suggestions on sections like... If you have a horse business, for example, renting stalls, and you have 20 horses, you'll have one or two or three employees, right? But if you're um, a, a single owner, like a mobile pet grooming business, and you drive your truck around and you don't have employees, so you wouldn't really have a section for employees if you're just a one-person shop, but any other things, then you would have an employee section where you would say, here's what I'm looking for, education, here's the benefits my employees get. It can get complicated fast, but um, 10 pages, and I can help you prioritize um, sections, like building outlay. And one thing before I forget to say, and I'll use the, the horse stall uh, business as an example, it would re be so neat if you could talk to somebody that is doing the business. And sometimes that's hard to do, but if you know somebody in the horse area and say, I want to talk to you, I have an assignment, you know, and you can, it's a great door opener. I have an assignment at college where we're going to design a business. Can I talk to you about your business and learn some things? And the, one of the things you always ask the person is, what would you do different? How would you design this building different? What would you do different in terms of how you started out, how you advertised, right? Um, oh, there's so many things to do. Start thinking about it. You know, the course is called Companion Animal Management, you know, and that's usually dogs, cats, horses. That's the big companion animals. But then there's reptiles, there's fish, there's birds. Uh, you know, if you're big into birds and want to have a shop that sells exotic birds, you know, how would you design it, so forth and so on. Any of that is really fair game. The idea is to think about a business, how you would, you know, where would you place it. If you want a dog kennel, you can't put it on Main Street. You know, there's zoning laws and stuff like that. Let's go on to the educational video. You're going to create one educational video related to some area of companion animal management. And I know some people have asked me, does it have to relate back up here? No. In fact, in fact it might be better not to, right? So companion animal management. And you're going to do it. You can explore things. I know people in the past have done them 
in um, PowerPoint and then do a voiceover and I'll, I'll send you some examples or go to my YouTube channel and there's all kinds of videos made from students and um, so forth. Anyway, you want to put it in the final format as an MP4 file because that's easy for me then to upload into uh, my YouTube channel and it's amazing how many hits some of these get. Uh, I think the one time a person made um, Karen uptake up upkeep of um, some exotic fish or something, and it's amazing how many hits it gets and uh, so forth and so on. But you're going to make an educational video of some topic that you're going to approve, approve, get approval from me as well as this project. Um, you know, there's tons of things to do here. But you, you need to get an approval from me like, okay, yeah, that sounds doable, right? And so that's another 400 points. So sometime down the line, maybe in three weeks or something, I'll say, hey, send me a little outline of your business enterprise because I need to know that you're working on it, right? And so you'll get some points for sending that outline in, you know, before the whole thing's due. And it'll probably be due the week before Thanksgiving, Okay, and for you that are on campus, our last day in class is the Thursday before Thanksgiving week, and that's where everything's going to end. There, might, you know, um, there might still be a video to summarize and send in after Thanksgiving, but as far as the on-campus on people, our last face-to-face -face is that Thursday before Thanksgiving, so you can plan ahead. But think of this, something educational that's aimed at advanced high school seniors or college freshmen, something you either want to make um, something normal on or management of, let's say you're great into turtles and you want to talk about, I've had 10 turtles and I want to tell you how I've improved because, you know, the first time you have a turtle, you probably didn't do very well. And the second time you got better. So if there's something that you have experience with and can talk with some authority, that is a great thing to do. Or if you want to learn about some topic. Let's say um, mm, pseudo rabies in, you know, dogs or parvovirus, something. And how, and if you had some personal experience, that would be neat. Or how to take care of horses, how to take care of dogs, how to take care of cats, how to foster cats. One time I had a student, and this I'm not making this up, she got up in the front of the room in this class and talked about how she's pretty much an expert at fostering kittens all the way from birth, you know, their mom died or lost. And, you know, she had quite an experience. So I asked her, how many cats have you fostered? And, you know, she was, what, 22 years old? She looks at us and goes, 400. And everybody just, like, stops breathing. Are you kidding me? You've fostered 400 cats? She said yes. So is she an expert at fostering cats, especially newborn kittens, and getting them through without their mom around? Yeah, I mean, she's the go-to person. Anyway... That's an educational video. Don't feel uh, like it's going to be a big deal because we'll help you with how to make the MP4 file. A lot of these programs now are pretty s straightforward. You can play with things, make a two-slide uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation, put some images in there, and then see if you can export it as an MP4 file. You can do that when you get done listening to this. So then these videos are going to be documentaries, I think I said that earlier, where you're going to watch, yeah, like the California pit bull situation, let's put it that way. There's, there's a lot of pit bulls in um, kennels, animal shelters, sometimes not many people want to adopt them, unfortunately. They get a bad press, oh my gosh, every time, you know, you hear about all these bad pit bulls in newspapers, but I'll tell you what. For everyone you hear in the newspaper, there's uh, half a million that are just wonderful animals. Anyway, so you're going to watch a documentary and probably make about, uh, let's say, 10 or 12 
bulleted statements of summaries or surprises to you or you know take home messages from the video the documentary it's usually a documentary and you can we don't have any final exam you can look at the rest of the syllabus but i'm not going to move this around because i don't think the program is working quite right that it will track that okay so now i just want to talk about um now we just did the syllabus earlier here where will we meet next week this is for the on-campus people i'll send you um email this weekend but i'm still i think want to be on that lawn on tuesdays and thursdays and i still think we'll just meet 3 30 because we can talk a lot about it and then we can just say the lectures are part of some of these videos that we're watching okay and we can talk about things in the labs Okay, so that's what I'm talking. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so for the on-campus people, I'm thinking 3:30 next week, Tuesday and Thursday, according to your lab. But I'll I'll ponder on that because for the lecture we can't all meet in our classroom. There's too many uh, because the classroom limit has been reduced by 50 percent. So like. The room we're in can't hold more than 44 after it's been reduced now, 44. It was originally 80, 44, and we have 50-some, maybe close to 60 in class. So then how do we split up? And I don't know. It's it's a nightmare. I have three classes, and, you know, you guys are busy too. So I'm thinking Tuesday, Thursday at 3.30 on the lawn, not meeting at all at 2.30. Then I just put this down to remind myself that you know when I use that for this is for everybody online or on campus when I talk to the students on campus I'm using a loudspeaker that has a recording system I haven't had time to see if our recordings have come through but what I'm going to do is see this weekend if if they did record our discussions I will post those someplace on our class website and then you, especially those people that are off campus, maybe you might want to listen to them and say, oh, that's a good idea for a project or that's a good question or so forth and so on. Okay, because there are some helpful hints that people ask about and, and so forth. And so uh, to refresh your memory, well, I'm thinking about it, you know, you want to see the course syllabus and most of everything else is on my own website, rodhours.com. Look at the syllabus. There are two backup websites because if the first website goes down, the second one is a duplicate, and the the third website is really you know a triplicate. Um, I can't afford the time when something goes down, like they're having trouble on campus. Like right, if uh, Brightspace goes down on campus, do they send you to a backup site? And the answer is absolutely not. You're stopped in your tracks. My websites, if one fails, there's two more. So be aware of that. I will probably keep points in the bright space and papers might be handed in there or into my website. I am not sure about that because they just yesterday talked about this program called Turn It In, which when you submit a paper, it says, oh, you didn't plagiarize it all, right? I mean, this is all done at home. All students are honest, but there might be one in a million that's not. And just for the integrity of the course, I have to probably have the Turnitin scan, whatever you submit. Not that I don't trust you, but we don't want somebody that's copying things off the Internet to get a Purdue degree. That's not right. I know everybody agrees with me, hopefully. And then this cartoon is wonderful. Um, I don't think this is a Great Pyrenees. It sure looks like it, and it might. I will say it is a Great Pyrenees. I used to own one of those. Her name was Monique, and she weighed 160 pounds. She had a blockier face than this. So there are some other white breeds that are big dogs that I can't think of right now. But um, look at this. You can sell the farm, but we're keeping the goat. 
And that's quite a good uh, little caption for that because they look like buddies. And if you're not familiar with this breed, and I'm going to say it's a Great Pyrenees, um, they are used to guard sheep and goats or whatever you have in a pasture. And you leave the dog with the goats. It's, and so it's not a pet. If you have a guard dog that guards sheep, and that's what Monique's parents had done, they live outside all the time. They live with the goats. They live with the sheep. And it's hard to have a guard dog and then have it as a pet. It's actually better to, okay, have one as a pet like we did. And it was actually a pretty good guard dog for the family. Or like this guy, he lives with the um, goat, I think. Although one thing that's questionable, look how clean he is. The dogs that live outside 24-7 usually don't quite look that clean. So anyway... Be good. You'll get some emails from me this weekend. I'm going to send out a notice where this video is after I make it into a MP4 file and upload it. Take care. Send me any email questions. That's great. Be good.